Hello, my people. Welcome to The Bite. Today, I have a really exciting recipe to share with you. Um, if you follow me on Instagram at The Bite with Jackie, I share a lot of what I make on a daily basis and what I made throughout the holidays. And you get a kind of sneak peek of what I plan to share here on the channel and on my blog. I posted some chocolate chip cookies that I made that were made with brown butter and they were absolutely delicious because they had sprinkles of salt on them and I got a lot of messages about them. I had been very hesitant for a long time to share any kind of chocolate chip cookie on here because I just feel like there's so many variations already out there, but um, you guys really seem to want this. So I am here to share it with you gladly because that means I get to eat some. So these are my salted brown butter chocolate chip cookies. They're absolutely phenomenal. You're going to love them. They do have some particular ingredients that are necessary and some steps in the process of making these cookies that really make them what they are. So let me show you what you'll need. So I have my flour, baking soda, and salt. I have here two very, very important ingredients. I have an egg and an egg yolk. This is really going to give you that super chewy texture that I love in a chocolate chip cookie. Um, the egg white will just lend more moisture and I just wanted the, the density from the yolk. This is brown butter and I will explain how I made this in just a second, but this lends a really nice nutty, almost toffee-like flavor and it is absolutely delicious. Some chocolate chips, I like to use dark chocolate or bittersweet here. Some salt, some vanilla extract, and brown sugar. So I played around with a lot of different variations of this recipe. Sometimes I would use, um, I would put nuts in it, or sometimes I would put half white sugar, half brown sugar, and sometimes I would put salt on top and not salt on top. This seemed to be the one that I fell back on all the time. Um, the brown butter is very simple to make. Very similar to semne or ghee, if you've seen my video on that, all you do is you take your butter and you put it in a saucepan. You whisk it consistently and you'll see it start to foam up. As you whisk, the difference, the key difference here between the semne and the ghee is that you keep the milk solids in there and that is going to be what turns a darker color and lends that really nutty flavor. So sh soon after you're mixing it and you don't want to stop mixing it, otherwise it will burn and scald the bottom of your pot. Um, soon after you'll see it turn this golden amber color and it will have a really nutty toffee like smell and then you have brown butter. You want to let it cool before you use it, whether or not it's um, solid like this because I had mine cooling for a little bit longer. Um, or melted still, either way works. Um, but that is how you make brown butter. Very simple, but it adds so much to whatever you put it in, so much. So let's get started. I really tend to do this in my stand mixer, but I don't really feel like pulling it out tonight. So we're gonna do it in a bowl. So I have my brown sugar in a bowl and I'm going to add all this beautiful brown butter. That brown butter smells so good. So good, that is like that toffee smell that I absolutely love. It almost looks like it just added more brown sugar to it, but it is the brown butter that has kind of solidified. So I'm just going to give this a mix before I add in my vanilla and my egg and egg yolks. Already smells so, so good. And that's the thing about using a stand mixer versus a whisk, everything gets stuck in here, but it seems like whenever I add the other liquid ingredients, like the egg and the um, vanilla, that everything kind of comes out of the whisk a little bit easier. Let me know if you agree with that, <laughs> because that is something that I struggle with. All right, adding my vanilla and my egg and the yolk, and just giving that all a quick mix before I add in the flour. So as I was developing this recipe, I was kind of doing a little bit of research as to how to achieve that perfect crisp edge and chewy center of a chocolate chip cookie. And that's what makes my favorite kind anyways. Um, the egg yolk really makes a huge, huge difference here. So as much as I think that that is such a kind of tedious step that you have to separate the egg yolk from the white, I really, if I can avoid it, I do. But it makes such a huge difference here and I highly recommend that you do it because you will not get the same with two regular eggs. So anyways. This is all done. I'm gonna get all this out of here. It's gonna drive me crazy. See that, that is why I like to use my stand mixer because I feel like I'm wasting all of that and it's gonna, 
Anyways, now I'm just going to add in, and I'm gonna to switch to a spatula. It's very important to do that here. So I'm gonna mix these dry ingredients and then add them all right on in to my wet ingredients and just mix it. Once it's just about combined, I'll add in the chocolate chips. All right, I added my chocolate chips in and the batter is all done. So it's not sticky at all. It's actually kind of got a buttery, kind of oily feeling and that is good. That's what we want here. This needs to get covered and put into the fridge. It will not turn out the same if we don't do that. I think two hours or more is gonna give you the best outcome for what I like. What I'm going for is a slightly puffy cookie that stays puffy after it cools. If you want a little bit of more of a flatter cookie, then you can leave it in for one hour. The less time you leave it in the fridge, the more flat the cookie will be. And especially if your butter is melted and not kind of solid or room temperature like mine was, then you wanna leave it in even longer um, so that it can achieve the right texture. This, for me, is gonna go in the fridge covered for two hours, and then we'll come back and I will put them in the oven because I can't wait to eat them. I'm so excited. All right, so my dough sat in the fridge. It came out and I'm just scooping it with a mini cookie scoop and you'll find that it's quite stiff, like quite hard. Um, and that's good because as it cooks, it won't spread as much. That's why I said to leave it in there for a minimum of two hours overnight. Um, otherwise it will be softer and again, it will spread. I like to finish these off with some sea salt. So I like to hit them with a little bit of sea salt just on the top because to me, I like cookies when they have like a salty sweet to them, not when they're tooth achingly sweet. To me, it's more appealing when they have that kind of salty sweet vibe. I just, I really happen to love that. So these are ready to go. They're in, they're gonna go into an oven at 350 for between 11 and 13 minutes. They're gonna look kind of underdone and that's good because what you don't want is to overcook them because as they cool, they kind of set. And if they are underbaked at between 11 and 13 minutes, depending on your oven, um, they will set at the perfect chewy texture. So you'll notice that they'll just be starting to turn golden brown on the edges, which will give that crisp exterior. And then the inside will be so chewy and so delicious. And ooh, I can't wait. So I'm just gonna wait for my oven to preheat, stick them in, and then I'll show you when they're done. All right, these came out of the oven a few minutes ago. They're just starting to set, and I wanna show you what the inside looks like. So if you kind of put your finger on it, it almost looks like they're not quite done, especially when they just come out of the oven. It seems like they need a couple more minutes. They don't, because they're gonna sit on the tray for just a little bit to cool. And look at this, ooh, it's hot. They're gonna to continue to kind of cook from the residual heat and you don't want them to overcook. You want them to have that chewy texture. At least I want them to have that chewy texture. I don't know about you. Um, these are heavenly. I think that's my new word. It seems like I use that a lot, but ooh, it's falling apart and it's hot, but mm. look at the inside of this. Do you see how chewy? You can, you can see the chewiness. You don't even need to chew it. You know it's chewy. The bittersweet chocolate with the salt, with that brown butter toffee flavor. You can even make these into ice cream sandwiches. Make these for Valentine's Day. Make these for a weekend treat. And make them with your kids because my daughter loves making these with me and she gets so excited and she tries to sneak all the chocolate chips out of the dough. And I have to tell her no. Even though I like to do that, she can't do that. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really hope you give these a try because you will be so happy that you did. These will be your new top chocolate chip cookie, guaranteed. And don't let the brown butter intimidate you, okay? It's easy. This takes a little bit of, you know, extra steps, but those extra steps yield something so amazing. 
just you wait. Thank you guys so much for watching. The full ingredients and directions will be on my blog as usual. When you make them, don't forget to tag me on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time on The Bite.